Welcome back to my channel. My name is Stephanie Rublitz and this week we are going to learn how to take this plaid work jacket and make it into a bomber style jacket. All right, so here's the jacket. Uh, these are in my house all the time. Uh, my husband wears them. When my father-in-law comes over, he's usually wearing one. He calls them work shirt jackets, which I can see. They do look like a work shirt. Um, they're always very boxy on me. So I am going to make it into a bomber. So that's gonna require taking some of the length off. Um, and I don't know, I feel like once I get the bottom on, I'll probably be okay with how boxy the bodice of the jacket is. Um, just because it is a bomber style and then we're going to take out the collar and we're going to put a bomber style collar on. Often bomber jackets have an exposed zipper. Um, I really like these snaps so I'm going to keep the snap detail. That just means that we're going to have to adjust the collar a little bit differently when we put it on so that the collar is not overlapping um, because you want the two sides of the collar to just meet. So there's going to be some adjustment there. I'm not 100% sure if I want to put the same cuff fabric on the sleeves or not. It's how a bomber jacket usually is, but it has matching snaps currently. So, mm, I don't know. I'm going to do the bottom, I'm going to do the collar, then I'll try it on and I'll see if I want to do the cuffs or not. The fabric that I will be doing the trim and potentially the cuffs in is this rib knit trim. Um, it comes in a tube actually and it's super stretchy so I'll be like doing a double layer of that uh, around the bottom the collar maybe the cuffs this was a little bit pricier I was actually kind of surprised um, I asked for a half meter and she was quite generous in her half meter measurement um, but I paid 14 bucks for it so I knew I had to do this video but I might in future, uh, I might, it might be something that I try and like stock up on. Now I did get way more than I need, um, so I'll have it for future projects, but yeah, that might be, if, if it's something that I like doing, then I might try and keep this as a staple and try and catch it when it's on like 50% off or something. Uh, yeah, so that's what we're doing today. Let's get to it. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to square up my trim fabric and I'm going to cut a couple pieces at four inches for the cuff and collar, and then I'm going to cut a piece at six inches for the bottom hem of the jacket. Next, I am going to mark one inch down from my collar, um, because this is where I'm going to cut the collar off. I'm just doing some placement, just seeing where I want things to be. I'm going to use the button placket that's already on the jacket as the place that where my uh, trim begins and ends. So I just need to take my stitch ripper and open that button placket up so that I'm able to sort of tuck that trim end in there. Now I did up all my snaps so I could make sure that everything was nice and, and square and true. And I'm just trimming around that button placket, but then I realized there actually wasn't a button placket on the bottom <laughs> layer. So I cut myself an extra little piece and I'm just gonna go in and um, secure that with an iron-on patch in a minute, and then everything will be fine. Um, I'm using my rotary cutter just to cut the length. You can see that I've already kind of cut one side of that. That's just because I was playing around trying to figure out if it was worth moving the pockets or not. And it just was going to be so much extra work that I was like, nah, I'm not going to bother with it because there's other pockets on the front of the jacket anyways. All right, here you can see the piece of fabric that I want to um, attach so that I can have uh, a folded over effect like the button placket for the top. So I'm just sticking an iron-on patch there. I've got a, a spare chunk of waste fabric underneath there so I can really secure that with an iron. And then I'm just going to do a zigzag stitch over top of it just to make sure that it's really secure. It's not even gonna be noticeable in the end. Next thing I need to do is I need to sew up the old pockets. Since I've decided just to not bother with them, I'm using a ladder stitch just to sew them closed.
Next I need to open the side seams a little bit. The uh, lining for the jacket and the exterior fabric are all sewn together as one. So because I'm going to attach the trim on one layer at a time, I just need to open up a little bit of that um, seam so that I could separate the fabric. Now I'm folding the back panel of the jacket in half as well as my trim in half just to get the halfway mark. And I'm going to anchor the halfway points together and the end points together. And that's just gonna help me make sure that I get an even stretch for my trim across the entire garment. Um, this trim is about, I think, four or five, four inches um, shorter than the overall garment so that it'll have just a little bit of, um, a little bit of pull in that elastic trim. Now I'm only fastening this trim onto the plaid exterior fabric right now. Um, and then we're going to attach the interior fabric, or the, yeah, the interior fabric, we'll call it. The lining, there we go, it's the lining. We're gonna attach the lining separately. As I'm pinning this on, I'm making sure that I stretch my, my trim, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and stitch that with a quarter inch stitch. Now you can see the quarter inch stitches on, you can see how nice that looks as a trim, and I'm going to flip the garment over, and the lining I'm going to just fold, and I'm going to pin it so that that fold is over top of the seam um, that I sewed to sew the trim onto the plaid layer. Once again, I'm stretching the trim as I'm pinning to make sure that the trim will have um, elasticity. I'm stitching in the ditch on the other side so that this seam should not be really noticeable at all. Now it's time to tuck that trim into the snap placket. Now, one thing I wasn't super good at is I cut my button placket um, too short. So instead of pinning it and then going over it with a machine, I'm just tucking everything in with my fingers and then I'm using the uh, ladder stitch just to secure everything at the bottom. On the other side, I've sort of created a button placket look. Um, that's that piece of fabric that we put on with the iron-on patch. I've folded it under and I've done the same on both sides so I can stitch that through with my machine and it'll look very similar to the top layer. Now we're gonna do the collar, but I'm not gonna spend a whole bunch of time showing you this because it's the exact same process that we just went through at the bottom. However, the difference is, is that the edges of the trim need to be buried within the collar. So it kind of like curves in um, and sort of like diminishes as it gets to the end rather than having sort of a straight cut end. So right here, this yellow line, this is, if I were to lift the trim up, this is the line that the um, collar opening is laying right now underneath this trim. So you can see that I've sort of pulled the trim over the line instead of just following um, the raw edges all together. Now it's really important when you make this transition to do it over the same distance on both sides. Otherwise, um, your sides might not look the same. So this particular garment, I did uh, the distance of four inches, you can see here. So I make sure that on the other side, I'm gonna keep that same four inch span that I do that transition. You can see here, I've got it all pinned and I'm just cutting off the excess uh, trim that is left over once I pull it over the edge of the garment. Now I'm gonna take that piece and I'll probably use that as a guide uh, to trim the other side so that both sides of my collar are going to look exactly the same. Other than that one thing, the entire collar is put on exactly the same as the bottom trim. I have decided after all that I'm gonna take the cuffs off, so I'm just gonna cut those right out. Now, as you can see, the cuff opening sort of presents a little bit of an extra challenge. I'm just going to stitch rip the edges um, so that I can open up that fabric, and I'm going to cut out just a little corner of the cotton batting on each side, just because when I layer all those extra layers of fabric, I don't want there to be too much extra bulk there. 
um, and then I'm going to pin it all back together and put my trim on. Just like I had to do on the bodice of the jacket, that side seam I have to open up again uh, just so I can separate the plaid from the lining of the jacket. Now I'm also going to layer up um, the cuff opening and I'm going to pin it just so that I really know what size I'm dealing with. And then I'm gonna lay my trim over top of the uh, exposed cuff so that I can see how long it needs to be. Once I've gotten my length, uh, I measure it on my measuring grid here and it came out to about 12 inches and I took four inches off of that. It seems like a lot to decrease it by a third, uh, but you want the cuffs to be quite snug around your wrists. And this fabric is so stretchy that it will have no problem whatsoever stretching out to the full width if you ever need it to. Once I cut those, I ran them through my machine just to make them into their own little tubes. And I'm just double checking that part where the cuff opens up was just sort of like finicky so I'm just making sure that all of my layers are really even and everything is pinned together really well because I'm going to place that cuff over top of it and I want everything to sew together very nicely. Now I'm going to take those cuffs and fold them in half and I've opened up the seam where I've sewn them together um, and that way it's not going to be super bulky rather than having the entire seam allowance slid to one side. It's opened up in there and so I've stuck a couple of pins just to keep holding it open. Once I have it sewn, it's not going to matter. As I pin the trim onto the cuff, I'm making sure that I stretch the trim out. This whole process, you really want to make sure that you're stretching the trim as far as the plaid fabric will allow. The plaid has no stretch in it at all, so like once you hit its max, you're there. Now I'm going to stitch those on the same way that I did all the other trim. And as I'm stitching this on, again, I'm pulling it, I'm stretching that out. Now I'm going to pin the lining onto the other side, flip that cuff inside out, and I'm just taking the time to actually move those pins to the outside. It seems like an extra finicky step, um, but it makes it so much easier to run it through the sewing machine. Now I have that little hole where the uh, cuff used to open and I don't want it anymore. So again, I'm using our trusty friend, the ladder stitch, to stitch that sucker up. And this is an opportunity also to go through all those little spots where um, I had to open up side seams and stuff in order to separate the exterior and interior fabrics um, and just make sure that I don't have any holes or anything where I had to pull out stitches. And here we are, the before and after. This jacket is completely ready to take camping, to sit by the fire pit, um, to wear out in the garden. I'm really happy with how this turned out. Uh, it's springtime in Calgary right now, which for us means basically alternating days of winter and mud. <laughs> and then all of a sudden there'll be leaves on the trees and it'll be beautiful. But for now, Things are a little unpredictable and they can get quite chilly. So there's plenty of room under this that I can absolutely put a hoodie if it's a really cold day. Um, but it's light enough that if I wear it on its own, it'll just keep the wind out and keep me comfortable. So I'm really happy to finally have like just a medium jacket that I can wear. Uh, it's been a while. It's been a while. <laughs> so I'm happy to add this to my wardrobe. Um, next week we're going to start moving into more spring summer fashion. Hopefully that will bring more spring summer weather with it uh here's hoping so thank you so much for making it to the end of the video i really appreciate you being here with me this whole time uh do all the things like share subscribe all that jazz and i will see you next week